Hello, everyone. Uh, so, somewhat special episode of Intended Power Retrospectives here. Side explanation. As of this recording, uh, a few days prior, we had the arson and mass killing at Kyoto Animation in Japan. I am a... If you don't watch my channel, if you only if you only watch my channel for an Nintendo Power perspective, I'm a, I'm a fan of anime. In case you couldn't tell from the posters and stuff behind me, um, and I'm a fan of Kyoto Animation's work. And one of the games being covered in this episode of Nintendo Power Perspectives is the game Ignition Factor, it's a firefighting game. Um, and I'm not feeling it for this week. It, it feels in bad taste. It feels inappropriate, given the circumstances. So, I am pushing the episode back a month. Um, next, that'll go up in August. So, I'm still doing the Tinder Power retrospectives, but instead I'm doing something that I plan do later. Not a best of the rest, but a book review. This book. So, by way of explanation of what this is, um, you may remember I did a review quite some time back, I'll try to put a link in the show notes to it, of the NES Classic Guide, that or Guide to NES Classics, rather. So, um, play, playing with Power NES Classics which came out as a companion book to the release of the NES Classic home console system, mini console that Nintendo put out um, with a whole bunch of NES games. And I did a video on that, and we do another one on this one now. So, this, so I got the more sort of deluxe edition of this. And basically, this makes a few changes in the presentation of the book. Uh, it's still hardcover. Um, in this case, it has a slipcover designed to look like the box art of Super Nintendo games. And then that slipcover is the actual book modeled after the art of a cartridge. It's actually a bit of a diff shift from the other one which was done in a, where I think the book itself was done as a loose cart, the book itself, the, the slipcover and everything was designed as a loose cartridge. And this one was sort of as a look and feel as under, get the packaging a little more. Um, as far as the book itself goes, it's different in how it handles everything. Um, so, by explanation, the Playing With Power book basically covered every single game that was in the NES Mini, or NES Classic. Not 100%, not, you're not getting uh, full strategy guides for everything, but most of the games. Um, this has a more limited selection of titles. Um, there are major games that are featured there, um, and longer games featured in there. Um, Legend of Zelda, Link to the Past, Star Fox 2, Earthbound, Super Metroid, but, like, not all of them. Like, um, Final Fantasy VI is not present. Or the, what, um, yeah, Final Fantasy VI isn't present. Um, there's a bunch of the other games that don't appear in there. How many? Is Contra not on here? Um, yeah, Contra's not on here. Like, we are, ba like, this book basically limits itself to the first party titles from Genius Mini. But what it does do differently um, is, <clears throat> I think, is a, is a bit of an improvement for the better. There's going to be a weighty thunk as I set this book down on the desk. Um, what this book does better. I think. Well, better and worse. Worse, it does less in terms of level maps and game maps and that sort of thing. 
the Ultimate NES Guide was a book that was basically designed to have on your coffee table with like all these nice arts and art and level maps and stuff taken from Nintendo old issues of Nintendo Power Magazine. You have them laid out and flip through them. It's perfect reference for while you're playing games on this console. And also just to look through and look at the art of the game in terms of game assets. What this book does um, is it makes up for that is it does less of that and does a little more of background for the various games. We get a little bit like get some behind the scenes essays, um, little tips and not tips, but little bits of trivia about each game. Um, and the interesting thing that this one has that other ones don't is it has speed run rats. Uh, like there are like. Each game has a general information about playing the game from speedrunners. Uh, like in terms of tips designed as like basic tip, basic moderate and expert level tricks for each games. This is everything from like warps to learning about RNG manipulation, that sort of thing. Um, tricks for speeding up control through various games. Um, and what makes this, like, really, really interesting, among other things, is, like, I mean, like, we have, because we have Metroid here, because we have Legend of Zelda here, we are also getting into, um, the, like, the games which kind of kicked off the speedrunning. Like, and so we have stuff here. Like, okay, here's notes on how to do the baby Metroid skip in Super Metroid. You had notes on, uh, how to can how to beat Mother Brain before you get the uh, hit with the uh, a rainbow beam. That sort of thing. It's it's. Very interesting. It's sort of how to put this. It's a it's a degree of coverage which I didn't which the other game didn't have, or the other book didn't have. It's just more focused on okay, general strategies versus playing each game normally. This one is very much into okay. Less here's how I play them the way that you would have played them normally back in the day. Here, here instead it's more. Here's how to play them differently. Here's how to do interesting things um, with these games outside of just the regular way you play them on top of, like, a few level maps here and there and that sort of thing. And also, of course, general, like, all of this has, like, art design, not art design, but, like, reference material and that sort of thing. It's a brief history of Nintendo. There's discussion here on the development of each game. Um, uh, for some of these we also get into like okay here's the basically the game here's the sorry for looking too far away but like here's the Nintendo games which came after or the Zelda games which came after that sort of thing. Sorry for looking too far. Or just kind of constantly looking away and talking, but I'm kind of flipping through it. To find relevant bits. It's again. It, it's not complete though. Both not complete in terms of coverage of the games, <clears throat> but also like not complete in terms of um. Are there, not, not, it's both not complete in terms of game selection, but also not complete in in terms of um game coverage. Some get a lot more than others. Uh, punch out complete coverage. Um, all the racing games, uh, F-Zero and, Super, Mar and uh, Super Mario Kart, full tracks. Um, every track in the game. But Super Mario World, no. You get like one map per world area. And it's not even the full map, and it's not even, like, it's not even the maps that do interesting things, which is actually the frustrating part, because 
when you get into Super Mario World, we're getting into stuff like hidden exits and levels, and more complicated, we have the ghost houses, which have much more complicated level designs. We had boos and um, Super Mar in uh, Super Mario Brothers 3, but the whole ghost house concept, the much more complicated and intricate level design is something that's very new to Super Mario World, and I would have liked to have seen, like, if you're going to pick a pick levels to showcase for this, uh, to showcase the game in the in your art book, pick the get the levels that do something that other games that, that the other Mario Brothers games never really did before. To do another perfect example, a similar example, um, if they did a similar approach as far as for guide organization for the NES guidebook, where it's like games get a wider like don't necessarily get full reproductions of the strategy guides from Nintendo Power and that sort of thing. Um, if we're getting like a selection of levels from Super Mario Brothers 2, I would want the art or other uh, level maps of the levels which focus on the game's verticality, uh, which is something that the other games in the series did not have. That sort of thing. Is this worth picking up? Kind of, yes. It, it's it's not you know it's not the strategy guide that you're going to have on your coffee table with your Super Nintendo Classic and be paging through as you're playing through the game. You're still going to want the Mario Atlas for Super Mario World. You're still going to want to maybe open up Game Facts articles or level maps off that on your tablet or that sort of thing. Um, definitely for the role playing game. But it's <clears throat> also it's not necessarily like the be all end all. Um, it's not going to replace the Legends of Localization books by any means. In fact, I do the credit of the book. It while it does not explicitly state outright that it's referencing the Legends of Localization series of books, and it does not give them the name check recommendation that I would prefer. Um, it does basically say, hey, there are full long books about the localization of Legend of Zelda, the localization of Earthbound that are worth checking, that, that you should seek out. Um, it, so it's not the be-all, end-all book, but it is, what it is, is if you have this Super Nintendo Classic, it is what it sets out to be, a nice coffee table book um, with well-presented information on... Starting out speedrunning, um, I would not consider it as valuable as some of the video tutorials that you would probably find on YouTube or other places. The and the historical articles are again nice for someone who is a, a, of a somewhat casual video game, it has a casual interest in video game history, and wants to get their feet wet before digging deeper. Before they say, "Okay, I'm going to go to a video game. I'm going to go to a Portland Retro Gaming Expo or whatever your local equivalent it is." And look at the exhibits from the Video Game History Foundation and that sort of thing. So, there's that. Um, sadly, it is one of the last guides, if not the last like big guide from Prima. Um, which is kind of a bummer, because I like, I like strategy guides. And I particularly like strategy guides when they are used as a mechanism for presenting information about a game that is beyond just a strategy guide. Like, to put it another way, a art book, like, like, if you make your strategy guide both a strategy guide and an art book, I am much more inclined to pick that bad boy up than just if it's just a strategy guide, strategy guide. Um, so, I dig it. Like, I, I dig this book. I like it. I'm got it for moderately cheap. Um, I think it was like 20, 25 bucks, and then got it in sale. Um, and it was a pretty good price for it. If you pick it, if you find a copy used, or if you don't get one with the slip cover, um, because there's an edition which I believe doesn't have the slip cover and but does have like the Super Nintendo box art style design on the uh, dust jacket. That'd be also worth picking up as well. It's it's a decent book. Um, it's not going to supplement or replace any of the more prominent video game art design, um, visual style 
art books or that sort of thing, but it is enjoyable to read and worth picking up. Next month, we will return to our regularly scheduled episode of Nintendo Power Retrospectives. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, Cosmic Fubox also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.